sass. Okay, this is some sass. Feast your eyes. Right, lots of dollar signs, brackets, parentheses, got some like programming action. This is what I say to that, right? <laughs> Obligatory meme slide. Love those. Um, so yeah, SAS. And like when you, all these new things, right? So there's, if you've heard of like gulp and grunt and like all these JavaScript, who even knows what's going on? When you're learning new stuff like that, like new technologies, and you see big like swaths of code like this, right? It's like a black box and you're kind of like, what's going on? Like, where do I start? How can I pick this apart and actually start? That's like the hardest part, I think at least. Um, so I'll try to demystify that for you. But first, this is a little bit of a violent first slide here. Um, how about uh, SAS versus less? Have you guys had that thought before? You're like, which one should I pick? Like, no, which one's better? Seems like SAS is kind of the winner now. Um, but I'm going to say, like, whichever one you like the best, <laughs> whatever works best for your workflow. Um, because the extent to which most people, most SAS users use SAS, less can do exactly the same thing. Um, SAS is more extensible, and I think that's kind of why it's won out a little bit. And the one on the right here, uh, Stylus kind of there for the rule of threes. <laughs> but Stylus is also another preprocessor and has a user community. It's smaller. People are super into it, though, so definitely check that out as well. But preprocessors, right? That's what these are. And kind of the reason SAS has won out now, I think, and the reason I use it and I think you guys should use it is the community behind it. So whenever you're choosing a new technology and you're kind of like, whether it be one of these JavaScript frameworks that there are 18 million of, or a task runner, or even kind of WordPress plugins, things like that, look for what has the most support, right? And where the community is. Because that's ultimately, unless you're one of these people that's building the tools, which I am not, and like, go for you, if that's you. But look for where, you know, where the most writing is about. What are people talking about? So the SAS way here is a pretty awesome blog that the team, team SAS works on. Lots of good tutorials, great resources there. And then a book apart. Are you guys familiar with a book apart, anybody? Yeah, yeah, if you're not. And if you are, go buy all of them. Because honestly, like, read one of those little things and you're like, oh wow, I'm a, like a self-proclaimed expert because this is just such a thorough, amazingly written grounding of whatever subject it is. There's a, um, the, ooh. Elements of Web Typography? No, just web type, on Web Typography, it's called, by Jason Santa Maria. So following up on this type stuff, definitely look into that one. Um, and then CSS Tricks, all familiar with that, right? So kind of, I don't know. If Chris Coyer is using SAS, probably just go with SAS. Hmm. But OK, another thing. And this is just like a little ridiculous uh, pet peeve, but also not ridiculous, because how many of you guys are irritated with capital P in WordPress, right? Word, capital P, press. And when people don't capitalize the P, you like cringe a little bit, maybe. Um, there's actually a function in WordPress core that automatically capitalizes the P on a word. Yeah, it's called capital P dang it is the name of the function. It's pretty funny. Um, there's not one of those for SAS. And SAS used to stand for syntactically awesome style sheets. Um, it was kind of an acronym. But then it underwent this big rebranding, and it's so beautiful now. But part of the rebranding was turning it into you know, a noun, capital S, all lowercase, A-S-S. -S. <laughs> um, funny. OK. Um, well, that's cool, but OK. Like, I know the history of SAS, whatever. But what does it do? OK. So we got code. right? I'm going to walk through a little process here. So we got SAS. CSS preprocessor, Haml, which is an HTML preprocessor, CoffeeScript, JavaScript preprocessor. Then we're going to compile the code with a command line tool like Grunt or CodeKit, which is kind of a graphic tool. Um, that happens in Terminal. And then we render it into the browser, into HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and done. Right? You guys, it's like a lot of, uh, I feel like that's a lot of jargon, right? And this is what makes this stuff hard, is it's like, all these words, like terms, acronyms, things that I have to look up and like memorize what they mean. Um, so let's talk about cookies instead. <laughs> gonna, gonna hit you with a hopefully not too stupid metaphor, but a little bit stupid. Um, so instead of thinking about this in terms of like SAS, preprocessors, Haml, whatever, and then like compiling and rendering, if we kind of break it down into a process here. So we can think about cookies. 
always thinking about cookies. I don't know about you guys. Um, so we got batter. So if we think of kind of the preprocessor as the cookie batter. So that's what we're working in. That's what we're making. That's how we kind of figure out what we want. And then you bake the cookies. Okay, so the batter's, you know, kind of going through a baking process, whatever happens in the magic of baking. It's like chemistry, right? Um, and then we eat the cookies. So let's kind of go back to all the jargon on the slide before. We've got our batter here is going to be the preprocessor. So that's kind of the raw form of whatever we're making. And then we need this middle step, the compiling, that turns the cookie dough into something that the browser can read. Okay, so just like Cookie Monster can't eat cookie dough, I certainly can, but not Cookie Monster, um, Chrome or your browser cannot process SAS. So we need that middle baking step to turn the SAS and whatever we're writing in our preprocessor pre, pre into CSS because that's what the browser can read. Does that make sense to you guys? Yeah? Everybody hungry? I'm kind of hungry. Okay, good. All right, so in non cookie terms, uh, this is kind of what it looks like. So we have our, oh, don't pay too much attention to this buzzwordiness here, um, but we have main.scss. So .scss is the general uh, file extension for SAS files. SCSS kind of means like SAS with CSS syntax. That's like another conversation a little bit. But um, point is, when you compile the SAS, it's going to spit out this CSS file, right? So essentially, SAS doesn't do anything. It like makes it easier for us to write CSS. And so we can think about, with this, like SAS's functionality, we can think a lot more systematically about CSS and a lot like drier. Have you guys heard of the term dry before? So D-R-Y which means don't repeat yourself. So basically when you're coding and you find yourself writing something more than like twice, you should be like, oh, something's wrong. I gotta figure this out, make this drier. Um, so, you sass, pretty good. Okay, and so what does it actually look like? What does it do, right? Like, what is this in practice? So this is CSS, gross CSS. Um, how many of you guys enjoy writing vendor prefixes? Okay, good. If you put your hand up, I would uh, really want to talk to you more, actually. <laughs> I was going to say walk out, but no, no, I'd be very interested in like your life. Um, yeah, so no, I, nobody likes writing vendor prefixes, right? And it's something we have to keep thinking about. Gross. With SAS, and uh, what this is using is an extension and a library called Compass, which we're going to look at a little more. Um, we can use a, a what's called a mixin, which is kind of a function that lets you package a bunch of code in, so you only have to write it once, and then you call this function. You kind of include this little package of code into your selector, in your SAS. So instead of writing all of this, you write this, and it's going to spit out all of those vendor prefixes. Um, variables. How many of you guys have done a find and replace in like a thousand line style sheet for a specific hex code. Do you enjoy doing that? Okay, good. How about like scanning of a file and you're like, oh wow, I have to like look up that hex code because I can't remember what color it is. Right, that's really annoying. I think so. Um, so variables like are the best thing in the world, probably. Um, so here we've got like a main color variable. So in, in my site title, instead of putting this hex code in, I can just, ooh, instead of putting my hex code in, I can just add this main color. And then every time I want to change the main color of the site, so your client's like, mm, that blue's a little off. And you're like, oh, well, no problem. I'll just change it in one spot and, you know, pay me. Um, <laughs> so that's kind of how that goes. And same with fonts. Like, you can really throw anything into a variable. So those are great. Minification. How many of you guys minify your code? Good. I should see every hand, but that's fine. So part of the reason we don't do that is it's annoying because you have to go put it in some other website that's like cssminify.com, whatever. And it's an extra step, and you're like, oh, does it doesn't really make that big a difference. It's a small site. With SAS, you can just, again, change one line. And in the compiler, like in that baking process, you're kind of specifies, specifying, OK, output it in this specific format. So whenever you're ready to launch your site or like move your final style sheet over to the server, you can do this and have your code really easily minified. Oh, well, look who we have here. 
So this is Phoebe. She's my family's uh, dog. And I like to do this whenever I show a lot of code on slides. Um, it's called an eye bleach. I found this on, online somewhere. But I figured Phoebe would be a nice little eye bleach for us. So just take a moment, because we're going to be looking at some more code. OK. Uh, how? All right, so again, we've got all this, uh, all this stuff, this background information. Like, SAS is great. I'm going to use it. Excellent. Um, the easiest, like, fastest, go do this immediately way to get started with SAS and actually use it is with Jetpack. So Jetpack, anybody use Jetpack? Yeah, so maintained by the automatic guys. Pretty awesome. Um, Jetpack has a CSS edit, editor CSS thing you can enable. And in, on the right-hand side, it lets you specify that you want to use SAS in there. So that's great. Um, I kind of feel like you might as well write CSS. This will help you do little syntax changes. But the essence of SAS, I think, is how you fundamentally are structuring something, right? So I think it's really worth getting into just like Googling it, reading it, figuring it out, and really building your, using that as like the foundation of your style sheets instead of doing just some quick, quick little uh, testing things inside Jetpack, which, you know, it's awesome. And if you want to play around with variables, go for it. But generally, like performance wise, you probably shouldn't be putting too much CSS in that anyways. So on the SAS site, lots of good, lots of good info. Um, two main ways to get started, right? You have CodeKit. CodeKit is that graphic user interface tool. So it's basically like plug and play. Download CodeKit, say like, I'm going to use SAS. And you're basically going. The other way is dun, 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 terminal. How many of you guys are ever used a little bit of terminal? Yeah? OK, OK. It's kind of scary. You probably won't erase your computer. It's like you have to be very intentional about doing that. So it's really not that bad. Um, I also am not sure why I named my computer Acorn Squash. Just whatever. Um, but so terminal, right? So terminal can be where you kind of press go on the oven. And essentially, when you see somebody with the command line open, terminal, also known as command line, and there's a whole bunch of text going, you're like, wow, they must be so smart. Like, what's going on? They probably just like said go. And it's, it's like logging things happen. I mean, for me at least. I'm sure other people are doing crazy things. But generally, that's what's happening. And that's what's happening here. So whenever you do install SAS, you're going to say, you're going to use this command. So SAS is Ruby based. Um, and gems are basically like Ruby plugins. You could think of that. So you say gem install SAS. That's basically saying add new plugin, this. And you'll see a bunch of stuff come up. And ideally, everything will go fine and dandy. And it probably won't. And you'll be Googling around a lot and like, ah. But it's good for you. Oh my gosh, back to cookies. Has anybody read this book or like remember this from childhood or like when your kids give a mouse a cookie, right? Um, I was planning on putting a different photo up here, but came across this one. And so in the story, right, you give the mouse a cookie and then he's like, oh, actually I want a glass of milk. And now I want a paper clip. And now I want new jeans. And now I want this. So it's the idea of the slippery slope. Okay, and this is my biggest argument for just biting your tongue and getting into this stuff, right? Because as soon as you figure this out, you're going to be like, ooh, grunt, like task runners, like let me refine my environment and figure this stuff out. And it's addicting and it's really fun and that like, that's leveling up. So it's a really good thing to do. Sit down and be really frustrated for a little bit, but know that the outcome is worth it. OK. Demo. Gasp. I say gasp here because demos are like death when you're giving a presentation, but I'm going to go for it. You guys can bear with me, hopefully. Find her first, Laura. This is my, my, small, my small reminder here. Because um, I, I gave this talk before at uh, WordCamp Montreal, and I had all these videos. And it was cool, but I was like, I really don't want to make a bunch of videos again. So I'm just going gonna, gonna to try to code a little bit for you guys. Um, but I have nice instructions here. And hopefully you can, can see this. Can you guys read this? Is this too, needs more contrast? It's okay? Yes? Okay. Um, and I'll be, I'll be posting all this stuff on the internet later, so you'll be good. Um, okay, cool. So first I want to look at what we got here. Oh, wait, finder first. I almost forgot. Okay. Ooh. Um, okay, so here we have kind of a basic SAS project structure. Don't pay, don't pay attention to these gem files. That's one of my things. But you have kind of your index, right? And then you have this SCSS folder and a CSS folder. And then there's this config RB thing. 
Okay, so all that config is doing, that's holding some settings for us in terms of where we want our SAS to listen, where we want the where we want Ruby to listen for the SAS and output the CSS. So we'll look at that in a second. Um, and then inside our SCSS folder is kind of our containing cell for all of our, our cookie batter, right? And then the cookie's gonna go inside of CSS. So back in here, um, this is our CSS on the right, and then our SCSS on the left. So there we go. So we got our styles in there, right? And it's being spit out over here. So I'm gonna start the compiler here, and we'll make a couple of changes. Um, so in terminal, right, all I'm gonna do is press go, essentially. It looks like kind of a weird command, but press go, compass watch. Okay, so compass is pulling for changes. Again, compass is this extension on top of SAS that I think is really useful when you're starting out. Kind of when you level up a little more and you're writing your own stuff, you might wanna venture away from compass, but it's really makes a lot of things easier when you're beginning. So I think compass is great. Okay, so now we have polling for changes, right? And I'm gonna save and, ooh, see what happened here? So this is kind of logging. Every time I save, it's gonna compile something. Instead of having to do compass compile, enter, compass compile, enter, this idea of watching a directory, it's just listening for changes and it's gonna compile them whenever that happens. Are you guys following me so far? Yeah, yeah, yeah? Okay. Um, all right, I have a list here for myself as well. Import things. Okay, well first we're importing compass. Right, so that's importing our regular library, kind of like if you were doing a uh, child theme, right? You know how you import style.css? We're gonna do that down here. So we're gonna import normalize. How many of you guys know what normalize is? Yeah, what is it? Quiz question. You're setting up everything so that it, it, it sets the basis for the CSS. Yeah, yes, uh, CSS reset, right? So you wanna clean the slate. You don't, want to, you don't want to be relying on default browser styles. You want to clean the slate before you start. Um, so I'm going to save and watch this. Whoa. Okay, so this is my CSS file. And you want to note, see everything in here is being overwritten every time I save. So you cannot be writing any CSS in there. And this could be like a disaster potentially. So if you are using SAS on a project, majorly educate your clients about that. So say like you are not allowed to edit the CSS file, period and maybe make another one for them if they need to. Um, but so let's set, pour a couple other things here. Um, so these guys, I'm gonna scroll down to the bottom of where normalize is. So these are my regular styles, right? This is what I have down here so far. And these two files here, variables and mixins, they're not putting, they're not spitting anything out, right? So variables and mixins are these kind of config settings and like those tools that uh, SAS has for us that doesn't compile to anything. We're just going to use those within our styles elsewhere. So let's take a look at these. So variables and mixins. Variable. Okay, I'm pretty proud of my variables file, actually. This isn't the full thing. You guys can see the full thing later, but kind of like figured out a good system for it, I think. Um, all right, so when you're defining variables, so we could have teal here, that's our color, right? And I could say link. In, uh, in my typography here, I could say color teal, right? But then if I'm like, oh, I, you know, what if I wanna change like all of the teal things or I wanna change my link color? Uh, so we wanna have semantic variables to use the word semantic all the time. I know, tired of hearing it too. But, um, and also here, so we have teal and we can kind of darken link color. So this is a pretty awesome SAS function you can darken, you can lighten, you can saturate, desaturate, and SAS basically takes this hex code and is gonna lighten it, or darken it by 20% and spit out a number. So no more like, you know, playing around with color figures. I'm not a fan. Um, and then, you know, so we're creating this kind of color system here immediately with just one thing. So if I decide I want my links to be orangish, then I can just, you know, define a new orange variable and put that here instead. Does that make sense? Yeah, so that's kind of cool. And then this is what I love, the scale. And talk about, talking about typography, right? So I wanted to kind of base the demo on uh, some strategies you can use for type. So a scale and kind of vertical rhythm is huge when you're designing sites. So you wanna have, at least in here, I have this base value and then everything is based on the base value, right? 
And then we also have our sans serif and serif fonts, keeping it to two, which is always a good rule, particularly for performance. So someone was asking about like Google fonts weighing down their page. Um, the more fonts you have, the more fonts you're including, the more sluggish it's going to be. So keep it to two. And then back to the idea of semantic variable names, we're going to have a heading font. Are you sure you guys can see? There you go. Um, a heading font and a body, body font. So if I'm like, oh, I want to change my heading font to serif, then I can do that right here. OK, mixins. Kind of define my own little mixin here that we're going to use. This is a little tool. So I also like the name of this upper space. So it's kind of like uppercase, a little bit letter spaced look. And we have a little parameter here. And then when we put in a value in there, it's going to spit out where this placeholder is. OK. So let's look at the typography now. So typography, again, see where I'm reusing all these variable variables here instead of you know, putting very specific pixel values that I then have to remember around. And I'm also using this base value everywhere. So even though it's, you can't really see it here, I think it makes a nice difference in how your entire website feels and kind of the layout. So yeah. OK, now let's see typography. So now we imported typography. We have lots more stuff in here. And so all these little values, right? These are from the multiple of the base, the base value. OK, compass. Let's look at compass again. And I'm going to comment these out just so we can see the compiler a little easier. OK, so back to vendor prefixes, right? Border box. Love border box. Oh, there we go. Cool. Um, if I had a nav and I wanted to make it a horizontal list, could do this. And look at that. OK. Anybody enjoy styling horizontal lists? That's another one of those things, right? So one thing to be aware of, though, and I like to use this as an example, when you are using libraries any across the board, you have to know that they are making design, design decisions for you. So there's another library called Bourbon, which is really great. But both of those, Bourbon and Compass, are going to be making these choices. So four pixels here, right? That's, I didn't put that in there. So Compass is spitting that out by default. And this is where you pay attention to the docs a lot. So Compass does have documentation. And you can put, param you can put arguments into that mixin to change the amount of padding. But good to be aware of. Um, let's see. Are we good on time still? Yeah, OK. All right, this is fun. I like this stuff. OK, so these, OK, first of all, these are the magic responsive design styles. Wrapper, max width 40, or not 45Ms, but max width and then margin auto. And then image, max width 100%. That's like going to make any responsive site beautiful. So let's look at just showing these quickly, because they're funny. Um, has anybody seen this before? No? Nobody's seen this? Yeah, exactly. So this is, this is a website. Uh, with zero styles on it, right? And watch this. It's responsive. It's beautiful, right? Like, why are we putting so many things on our websites? Um, <laughs> and, but back to typography, right? Let's look at the better motherfucking website. So this has like eight lines of style, has a little bit of line height, uh, adjusted the colors a little bit, so some basic typographic principles. It is in Times New Roman, but it's pretty, right? So kind of a, a testimony to keeping things simple. And uh, I think we forget about that a lot, particularly because the web is so powerful now, right? Like parallax, video backgrounds, especially a lot of these WordPress themes that have you know, many, many, many options. There's a lot of value in kind of bringing it back to the core of things. So I like to use this as an example. Anyways, this is my version about cookies. So this is our demo site. Look at this guy. Ah, so cute. Um, yeah, nice. OK, so let's check it out. We have our magic responsive styles. Yes. Uh, let's add our, our CSS reset in here. And you're going to see, I'm going to go to Helvetica. Okay, so sometimes you might need to refresh a couple of times because the compiler has to compile, do its thing. So cool. Um, I might like a little bit of padding on the sides, like some breathing room. You guys think yes? OK, let's do it. Uh, so what do you think we might use? Well, this is a tip here. 
Okay, this is where our like little system of units come in. So use the, like instead of thinking in pixels ever again, you think in your set of units, right? So I know base is like my little base node um, of everything. So I'm gonna use base for my padding. And do a little refresh and ta-da, much nicer. Okay, and I'm also gonna uncomment my typography styles up here. So you can see some of the improvements that are added to all my margins. So right now these margins and all the spacing has been set by normalize, but I'm gonna add my typography style sheet in, my typography partial, because that's where I'm using all of my nice scale, everything like that. Always save, that's kind of a problem. Oh, also I wanna make an intentional error for you guys so you can see what that looks like. So let's say, whoops, I just, oh, that's not an error. Oh man, I just deleted everything and I'm missing a bracket. Let's see this, missing a bracket. So I save and, oh, oh, invalid CSS, da da da. So SAS gives you some pretty helpful, unlike PHP, SAS gives you some helpful error messages. So we have invalid CSS after line 50. Okay, you got it. Let me go fix that. Perfect. Okay, now I have my typography styles in. And again, sometimes you gotta refresh a couple of times. But okay, so now we have a little bit of a nicer, nicer spacing here. This is the ipsum I'm using. Yeah, okay. Let's see what's next on the agenda. Um, now I'll use our own mix in a little bit. So my little letter spacing thing that I did before, the upper space mix in, instead of uh, putting that in everywhere, I can just put it in here. I wanna style a little lead, lead paragraph. So in, uh, in index, that's gonna look like right here. So it's kind of my opening, my opening paragraph. So it happened, there we go. Not that that looks great, but you get the idea, right? Yeah, okay. One other thing before I do this, okay. Uh, is anybody familiar with like the 45, 75 character limit in lines? Yeah. So wonderful Chris Coyer made a plugin here a little browser bookmarklet that lets you click on something and shows you kind of that line. And so you can play around with your text and try to keep everything to that length. And here, I'm like, oh wow, am I gonna have to like go through and find all my values and do this, this, and this? And it's like, no, I can just adjust a little variable. And I'm gonna do that here. I'm gonna make everything a little bigger, see if that helps, because this is kind of small. So at 1.3. And I'm gonna do a refresh, and there we go. So now, all right, looking good. Types of cookies. And here's my link, right? So before I made that teal color, and I changed my active states a little bit. So the hover and then the active, it's a little bit darker. So, whoops. Okay, I think that's the end of my demo, you guys. Made it! Oh wait, time out. It's not the end of my slides though. Okay, oh wow, Whew. there we go, so we made it. So this can be you guys, this is Phoebe's again, Phoebe, and she sees the scary bulldog, which is uh, sass, right? And she's not backing down, so that's gonna be you guys this weekend, right? No doubt, okay. And a, finally, a nice gift, simple sassy starter. I made this thing, and it's a, a simple sassy starter kit, believe it or not. So. You can download this and you could use this in a WordPress theme or in a child theme, something like that. And we have, it's a little more in depth than what I just looked at with you guys. So there's this SCSS folder, which I don't know, it's a little bit slow. But you'll see there's a bunch of partials in there and the structure is a little bit different. And there's like tons of comments and links all around. So you can take a look through that and then lots of info. Yeah, so here we have main CSS, same as before, and that's gonna be importing a bunch of stuff. And then inside we have utility. I'm just calling the folder something a little bit different, a little more buzzwordy. And yeah, lots of nice info. Cool. Thanks. Yay. All right. Open the floor for questions. Oh, yeah, back there. Is there a difference between code kit and sublime text? Yeah. Oh, big difference. Yeah. So sublime text is what we're using for, um, or what I'm using and like everybody should use because it's amazing for a text editor. And code kit is a 
an application that is used to kind of make the using SAS or less or grunt a lot of these command line tools it gives it a graphic interface so instead of you know doing the you know in here how I was like you know how I start SAS here and it's kind of watching in there you would see that in a in an actual application instead so it's just kind of an abstraction from that does that make sense so they're very, they're very different things like you're coding in sublime and code kit is perform is doing this exactly doing this task doing the compiling stuff oh maybe I totally should have downloaded that and showed you guys but uh, yeah that's good yeah um, yeah I mean that you know it's one of those things it's, it's good software and I think we're spending a little money on it. like free demos are great and always should use them but what's that yeah yeah there's a good um, something I link to what's that Code kit? Yeah. Oh. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you get an yeah, it's all learning, learning. Everybody's learning. So cool, yeah, code kit's great. Yeah. Can you say something more about how to specifically include SAS in WordPress? Because I think WordPress is sitting there looking for that style CSS folder. And and I saw like all that Ruby stuff and I'm not sure how to get it into WordPress Sure. Yeah. Well we can look I'll show you guys like a theme. Um, ooh, this might be hard. Maybe not to think of the appropriate theme here. Okay, well, like Bones. Okay, Bones is a good example. So this is, Bones is a starter theme. Anybody use Bones? Yeah, I feel, I learned so much from Bones. That was like my first starter kit thing. It's, it's wonderful. Um, but inside Bones, Right, you have this library, and that's all that. So the simple sassy starter thing is basically library or assets, something like that. So you could drag it into a theme and call it that. And then what you're going to do is enqueue this style sheet. So this I called main.css, and you're going to use one a func in functions PHP. You're going to enqueue that style sheet. And essentially in um, style.css, you're not going to have any styles. So like this guy says, you may be thinking. What happened here? Before you freak out, let me take, this is cute. Um, but yeah, so you're actually, you kind of DQ, or I don't know if you actually DQ style CSS, but you're using your own style sheet, essentially. Does that make sense? Or you never need to, yeah, you just enqueue your own, and then style CSS just sits there and does its WordPress read my theme info in the comments business. Yeah? Uh, well, I use Grunt just because I've kind of committed to it right now. Um, Gulp, I played around with a little bit, and I was like, this is awesome. So I kind of want to change. But I think I'm just going to commit to Grunt. Uh, they're both great. They're both great. They're different. Gulp is a little, the syntax is a little cleaner. And there's this idea of piping tasks instead of like in queuing tasks it's a little they're kind of called on an on as needed basis whereas grunt kind of runs everything um try both out and see see what you like yeah i mean but at this point i used to say grunt because gulp was a little newer but at this point both have really strong communities so yeah is there a text editor that already has a compiler in it that's a good question uh not that i know of i'm not sure why that doesn't exist yeah. I mean, I guess you could argue it's like Dreamweaver or something. <laughs> I mean, no, but it, but that would be, you know, because the point of the text editor is it's like just text. So yeah, that's interesting though. I've never heard of that. Yeah. Anybody else? Okay. Thanks, guys. Yay.